Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into today's video, please consider hitting the like, subscribe and share button and obviously leaving a comment about the discussion we're going to have down in the comment section down below. It really helps in the algorithm. But now, on to today's subject. The other day, I had a very interesting interaction on Twitter. I was trying to explain to a feminist who in turn blocked me why people were outraged and annoyed with the charity Refuge, a domestic violence charity here in the UK. Now, if you've seen my Refuge saga series so far, which this will probably be a part of, I'll link it down below, you will understand why. It's because they demand a gendered definition and a gendered law when it comes to domestic Domestic violence. The person I'm going to be responding to today and presenting evidence and facts to back up my assertions is Zappa or Claude Nine, whichever one you want to call him, them, whatever. They were trying to respond by saying why would people talk about male victims of domestic violence and why should male domestic violence charities get the attention that they deserve because the problem of domestic violence against men is minuscule compared to violence against women. Now they try to back this up by saying speak to police hospitals use crime stats coroners if you want a true picture of domestic abuse i simply responded men face the overwhelming majority of violence and homicides do we get to demand they be gendered crimes also it's not minuscule depending on which numbers you use it's between a third to half of all victims are men that's not minuscule now i'll be going through and using the evidence i'm going to be showing in this video to obviously debunk the person above but obviously they go a step further they want to demand that women murdered be considered femicide now femicide is basically attacks on women because they're women that is a significantly small percentage of actual murders especially when it comes to women murders as well but i'll get to that in a minute anyway without further prattling on let's actually get into the articles and the studies at hand shall we by the way links to all of the sources i'm going to be using will be in the description down below so if you want to go and double check what i'm saying you can but obviously i will be reading directly from the articles themselves but here we go why are men often overlooked as victims of domestic abuse and that is a very 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 good question. Maybe it's because most people don't see what women do to men as domestic abuse. I mean, a lot of people, especially women, don't consider that a slight tap on the face from them to their husband would be considered domestic abuse. Yet, under the strictest definitions, it is. Anyway, domestic abuse is routinely portrayed as a gendered crime perpetrated by men against women. That is what I showed you in my video when it came to from refuge themselves. And obviously, I'll include a screenshot of that here. Yet the startling truth is that one third of domestic abuse victims are men. The Office for National Statistics estimates that 1.6 million women and 757,000 men reported abuse in 2020, and that's only increasing. Despite representing such a significant proportion of victims, men are silenced by the hostility and incredul incredulity, whatever that word is, I'm terrible with words, as if you've been here for long enough you would know, they encounter when opening up about their experiences to the police and safeguarding services. Support agencies often fail to recognise the abuse of men and overlook cases involving female abusers. That's where I tend to come in. I pick up the slack where the officials drop it. Recent studies of homicide reviews highlight a lack of training and support in the recognition and handling of male domestic abuse. Mankind Charity reports that in 2021, out of 238 refuge spaces for victims of domestic abuse, only 58 were committed to supporting male survivors. Another study conducted by Bristol University details how male victims seldom get asked about their domestic relationships by health professionals, and that is absolutely disgusting. And they're right when they say that domestic violence charities consider domestic violence a male on female crime. They obviously do. Here is the screenshot from Refuge, the charity I've been talking about this entire time. You may be visiting this because you are or think you might be experiencing domestic violence. And here's the clincher. Most domestic violence is directed at women, but men can be abused too in both heterosexual and gay relationships. It is important to realise that you are not alone. Refuge and many organisations are here to help you. Now, now, they're not quite here to help us when they're sitting here and demanding that domestic violence be considered a gendered issue and a gendered crime, as evident from this tweet that I'm pretty sure most of you have seen me post more than once. They do not get to sit there and claim that they're there for everyone when they're sitting and demanding that a subset of victims be completely ignored. Now, on to the next one. The social stigma surrounding domestic abuse is even stronger when the victim is a man and the perpetrator is a woman, as quote, James, a domestic 
a domestic abuse survivor trapped in an abusive relationship for over a decade told the CSJ, the article whose or the company whose article I'm reading. The doctor dismissed the bruises and welts on my arms as no cause for concern. Yet you can absolutely bet that if he had done anything to her, even the slightest and she broke her nail, that would be immediately reported. The lack of empathy and support from this doctor stopped him from seeking further help, and the abuse continued. It instilled in me the sense that as a man, recognition of my position as a victim of domestic abuse would not be forthcoming, James told us. After thought, sorry, after having thoughts on self-harm, James had to call a female helpline. Male helplines do not work on weekends. The female helpline told him that they could not offer him any help, as they did not have the funding to support male victims. That is something else that is, people are mad about, is the fact that the government funds so much domestic violence, when it, oh sorry, funds domestic violence charities so much that when they need help, they, women need help, they're automatically there, yet they've not given enough funding to actually support the men when they need help. James continued to live in fear of his wife's aggression and her impact on their children, who were also experiencing the abuse. During the particularly terrible act of extreme violence, his wife was driving a knife to her throat and threatening to blame James for hurting her while calling the police and then hanging up. Their seven-year-old daughter ran to, the, ran to tell the neighbours what was happening and eventually the police arrived, intervened and arrested her. James has since married, managed to escape his abusive relationship and has taken custody over of his children. That's good, but unfortunately, people like James are the outlier and not, un and tragically, not the rule. There are lots of missed opportunities to identify and support male victims of domestic abuse as no one understands the issue. As a result, professionals less readily recognise victims and men feel that they don't need, feel that they won't be believed or taken seriously, states Mark's book, Mark Brooks of the Mankind Charity. Part of the problem is how they define violence against men or violence against men and boys it's they don't they really don't even recently sorry even recent policy documents make it clear for male victims to speak out the home office recently released a report titled supporting male victims of crime or sorry of crimes considered violence against women and girls which classifies male survivors under aggression done to women and girls so even when violence like domestic violence and rape is committed against us it is jotted down as a crime that affects women and girls because of how they choose to word the laws and how they choose to define what happens to men. Both survivors and charities oppose this term as it does not explicitly recognise men as victims of abuse and there is therefore difficult for male victims to relate to and further delegitimises their traumatic experiences. And that's the point. If a woman was to come up to me and hit me in the face and I reported that as domestic violence, that would go down in the statistics as another notch for violence against women and girls. That's how they inflate the numbers. The new CSJ's, sorry, the CSJ's newly released report, No Honour in Abuse, Harnessing the Health Services to End Domestic Abuse, calls for male victims to be classified as victims of violence against men and boys, which is precisely what they are, and pushes for a parallel strategy in healthcare and charities to provide equally strong support for female and male victims of domestic abuse. Because even though, as the person in the beginning claimed, that it was minuscule, it is a third of all victims. The CSJ also calls for NHS England and the Department of Health and Social Care to empathise the res uh, responsibility of health professionals of helping victims of abuse through introducing statutory training in the identification and support of victims of domestic abuse. With proper training, more funding and less prejudice, sorry prejudice, we could de de destigmatise views of male victims of domestic abuse and provide much needed support to those subject to this violent humiliation. Now that that's over, let's go back to what the person initially said, how the police are the people who are best to look at when it comes to statistics of uh, domestic violence against men. It shows there in the studies that when a man is violently attacked by a woman in domestic violence, it is reported as, to the authorities, a victim of, or sorry, a crime against women and girls. So they're going to be absolutely useless. The fact that they also claim it's minuscule and they Therefore, dom uh, domestic violence charities like Refuge get to claim or get to demand that domestic violence be considered a gendered crime, even though a third of the victims, even by the laxist of definitions, is one third. Let's also have a look at what else is one third, shall we? Murders. As in previous years, the majority of homicide victims were male. In the year ending March 2021, over two thirds of all victims were male, 70%. Around about those, or around about the same amount of victims 
victims even go by uh, going by their lax numbers that are victims of domestic violence being women does that mean we get to demand that murder is considered a gendered crime and ask for a gendered definition no that would not be considered morally or even lawfully correct because obviously women are still murdered now it says here the mur number of female victims 177 was the same as last year that is 177 women murdered compared to 757,000 men who are the victims of domestic violence now if it's minuscule to consider 757,000 men a victim of domestic violence and therefore demanding gendered crime or a gender definition is the correct move then surely then surely 177 women is not even minuscule it's practically non-existent i mean why else would people bring up it that it's 177 women i mean could it be possible that people just don't care about male victims i mean let's look at the next article shall we the uk's femicide epidemic who's killing our daughters now i'm not going to go into this article itself because it's absolutely mind numbing but in the last part of our end femicide campaign we examine how stalking coercive control and pornography lie behind so many of the killings of 272 young women in 10 years that's 27 per year i'm pretty sure more men commit suicide over the domestic abuse they face than women have been murdered in the past 10 years when it comes to domestic abuse that's just my speculation i've not got any actual numbers to back that up but one would make a logical conclusion in that but yet it's minuscule and i'm going to hark on this point quite a bit it's minuscule to consider a man a victim of domestic violence even though men are one third of all victims i'm just going to ask this question because i already have the answer is it correct or is it right to demand that murder be seen a gendered crime because the majority of the victims are men no because you would do a disservice to the victims who aren't men who are also murdered that does the same to men who are victims of domestic violence now i actually have some statistics now these are from america but they are relatively similar to ours over one in three women 35 percent or 35.6 percent and one in four men 28.5 percent in the u.s have experienced rape physical violence and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime very much or very little difference almost half of all women and men in the u.s have experienced psychological aggression by an intimate partner in their lifetime 48.4 percent and 48.8 percent respectively meaning women are, are actually less likely by these statistics even just slightly to have experienced a psychological aggression basically coercive control emotional and manipulation that kind of thing yet emotional abuse and coercive control is considered femicide to some people in the uk now here's one it's the one in six statistics when it comes to men researchers have found that one in six men have experienced unwanted or abuse abusive sexual experiences before age 16 and this is probably a low estimate since it doesn't include non-contact experience which can also have a lasting effects i'm not going to show this or read this entirety thing but i'm going to link to it down below as i said before because it comes from someone i trust on twitter femme condition and she simply says that men are not subject to the abuse at the same rate as women is largely a myth as i've showed you guys before when it comes to domestic violence it's more than likely perpetrated by women in non-reciprocal cases i.e when one person is hitting the other and the other isn't hitting back 70 percent of the time it's women perpetrating that or initiating that even when it comes to reciprocal abuse i.e one person hitting the other and the other hitting back women tend to perpetrate that more as well that men who suffer abuse are abused by men is largely a myth and that is as i've just showed you previously is true the truth is men and women experience abuse at rates that hold no statistically significant difference end gendered victim eight and the fact that they that has to be said is quite disgusting to me the fact that people sit there and say we have to end victim uh end gendered victim eight why should men and it's uh, it is about men why should men have to sit there and be ignored for the abuse that they face simply because it it irks some people i'll leave that up to you guys i've rambled on long enough and I just wanted to show this and show how people treat and react to men even mentioning that they're victims of domestic abuse. I personally am not. Something else entirely. But the men that are, you are not alone. You can seek help. Even if there's not much out there for you, there are places you can go and there are people you can speak to. Please go speak to them if you need them. Anyway, I'll leave you all 
on this for now, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.